نحمد ونسلی علی رسول الکریم اما بعد صورت الغاشیہ اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم حل اتا کا حدیث الغاشیہ وجوہ یوم ذن خاشعہ عاملۃ الناصبہ تسلا نارا حامیہ تسقا من عین آنیہ لیس لهم طعام الا من ضریع لا يسمن ولا یغنی من جوع صدق اللہ العظیم Has there come to you the story of the enveloper, the overwhelming? Gashiyah, the day, you know, which will cover all mankind. The day of resurrection. Bujuhun yawmayadin khashiyah. Many faces on that day shall be downcast. Aamilatun nasibah. Laboring and tired, exhausted. Tasla naran hamiya, entering into the scorching fire. Tuska min ainin aniya, made to drink from a boiling fountain, a f- fountain of boiling water. Laisa lahum taamun illa min zariyeh. They will have no food except bitter thorns. La yusminu wa la yuni min jur. Neither nourishing. nor satisfying the hunger wujuh yawm azin naima on the contrary many faces on that day shall be delighted lisaiha radiya they will be very much pleased with the results of their endeavors when they will see the result that they are going to get for whatever the they did in the past life they will be pleased with it fi jannatin aliya in a very high garden la tasma'u fiha laghiya they will not hear there even any vain talk a cultured person does not like to even listen to gossips and vain talks fiha ainun jariya In that there is a flowing fountain, fiha sorurun marfuga. There are raised couches, vakwabum mauzuga, and goblets arranged in order. One amare ko masfufa, and cushions set in rows. Wazarabi yom absusa, and carpets spread out. افلا ينظرون الى الابل كيف خلقت so do they not look at the camels how they are created all these creations are signs of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for the arabs you know these four things they were mostly before their eyes they kept traveling and when they traveled they used to be on the horses on the backs of the camels under them is the earth over them the sky and to right or left of them the mountains because this hijaz you know is a mountainous country so the journey used to be in the valleys valley is between two mountains to right of the, them mountain to the left of them mountain so these four things especially they are mentioned here afala yanzuruna ilal ibl kayfa khulqat so do they not look at the camel how they are created how they are fitting with the environment their bodies their physiology absolutely suits the environment in which it has to live while the sama ek farufat and to the heaven how it is raised high while the jibal ek farusibat and to the mountains to their left and right how they have been fixed by the lord the kayfa sutihat and to the earth beneath them how it has been spread out fazakkir in nama anta muzakkir so muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam you go on admonishing them reminding them 
inviting them to see all these signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These signs are everywhere in the universe. Wafi anfusikum. And even within yourselves. Fazakir. So you go on reminding them, go on admonishing them. Lasta alayhim bi musayatir. You are not a warder over them. You are not responsible for them. Your function is to convey the message and to admonish them. Now, this point, I think, must be cleared. That the two levels are different. At the individual level, no man has ever been compelled to accept Islam and will never be compelled to accept Islam. Like Raha Fiddin, Qab Tabayyan Rushtu Min al Individuals, this is the rule. But the system, for that, the rule is absolutely converse. If the believers have power and they let the system of falsehood remain, then they are not loyal to the truth. If they have power, they have to uproot the wrong system and establish the deen of Allah, which is the just system of life. If don't, they don't have power, okay, then they have to continue the effort to get that power. The dawa, the training, the organization, all that, what for? So that you have that power, you have that strength with which you can change the system. So for changing the system, power has to be used. We shall apply caution. If we have power, we shall use it but not for compelling any individual to accept Islam as a mazhab. فَذَكِّرْ in نَمَا anta muzakkir. So you go on reminding them and admonishing them. لَسْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ بِمُسَّيْتِرْ You are not a warder over them. إِلَّا مَنْ تَوَلَّا وَكَفَرْ But whosoever turns back and disbelieves, فَيُعَذِّبُهُ اللَّهُ الْعَذَابَ akbar. Then Allah will chastise him with the greatest chastisement. Why greatest? Because Muhammad is the greatest scholar towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the greatest prophet of Allah, greatest messenger of Allah. Quran is the last and the greatest word of Allah. Now even if all these things they don't believe, so they deserve the greatest punishment. Inna ilayna yabahum, verily, to us is their return. They can't go anywhere else. They have to come to us. Summa inna alayna hisabahu. Then on us, upon us, is their accounting and reckoning. It's our duty to tell them this is your account. This is the credit, this is the discredit. Here also you saw, Fazakir in nama anta muzakir. And because the sermon of Juma is for tazkir, there is a hadith in the Sahih of Imam Muslim, Rahimahullah. Kana lil Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam khutbatan. For the Prophet, there were two khutbas, just as we have today, all the Imams, khatibs, two khutbas, they sit in between them. Yadil Subayna Huma used to sit and for some time between the two. Kana yakrao ayatim in al Quran wa yuzakkirun nas. And this was the subject of khutbah. That he used to recite the ayat of Quran and remind people. So this sermon of Juma is actually to remind people. And as I explained when we were reading Surah Al Juma, actually this is the weekly meeting of Hezbollah, the party of Allah which is to strive to establish the deen of Allah on earth. And for that purpose, they must keep fresh in their minds the ideology of Islam. If this ideology becomes dim, then you know the, their motivation will decrease. Their commitment will decrease. So refresh the ideology, refresh the ideology. The basic thought, the basic ideology, it must be refreshed every week. Surah Al-Fajr and Suratul Al-Balad are another pair. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Wal Fajr, Walayal in Ashr, 
و شف و الوطن و لیل ضا یاسن حلف ضال کا قسم صدق اللہ العظیم ایز آئی سیٹ بفور آلسو دس سبجیکٹ آف دی اوتھس آف قرآن از اے ویری ڈیفیکلٹ سبجیکٹ سم ویئر اٹس ایزی ٹو انڈرسٹینڈ وٹ از مخسم دہی وٹ از مخسم علیہ with what the oath is being taken on on what the oath is being taken and there is a rational connection between the two but at most of the other places there are several you know interpretations and several meanings given by mufassirin but there are places where we can't say surely what is the exact meaning wal fajr by the dawn now i understand That as I said before, was subhi is a asfar. It denoted in Surah Al-Mudassir the advent of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the beginning of the prophethood of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Was subhi is a asfar. In the same way, I I think that here also, the it is being pointed in that direction by the dawn. Walayal in Ashr, and by the ten nights. Mostly people think these are the ten nights of Zul Hijjah. First ten days of Zul Hijjah, they are very sacred. Was Shafi Wal Watr by the even and the odd. Many sayings are there about the interpretation. Wal Layl is a Yasser, and by the night when it departs, this again, as far as I think, denotes to the advent of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The night is departing. Wa laila is adbar, wa subh is a asfar. So in the beginning fajr, in the end, wa laila is a yasr, and then the night by the night when it departs. Half is a leka kasabul ladi hejr. Is there not in that an oath for a man? Now the historical events, only brief mentions of. قوم عاد و سبود و سو آن علم ترا کئی فعال رب کا بیاد ڈیڈنٹ یو سی وٹ یور لارڈ ڈڈ ود دی نیشن آف عاد ہاؤ ہی ڈیلٹ ود دم ارم آزاد العماد آف ارم ہیونگ ویری ہائی پلرس دے سی دیٹ ارم واز دی نیم آف دی سٹی آد واز نیم آف دی نیشن ارم واز دی سٹی And that is said generally, Jannatul Shaddad. Shaddad was an emperor of Ad, and he has, you know, a city he established, a very beautiful, all gardens, and then on the ramparts there were very high pillars. So Iram was at the Ad, that city of Iram, which had very high pillars. التي لم يخلق مثلها في البلاد دي لائک اف هوم ور نیور کریٹڈ ان دی لینڈز دیٹ واز فار دی فرسٹ ٹائم اٹ مسٹ بی ایٹ لیسٹ 6000 ایئرز فرام ناؤ اینڈ دیر واز سم نیوز دیٹ ناؤ دس سٹی ہیز بین سین انڈر دی ڈیزرٹ دیر آر دی ریمنٹس اف دس سٹی پریزنٹ ناؤ بیکاز دیر آر ٹیکنیکس ود وچ دے کین سی وٹ از بینیت دی سوائل otherwise over it is a very bad desert nothing stands over there everything sinks into the into the sand quick sands alam tara kayfa fa'ala rabbuka bi'adin ila mazatil imad allati lam yukhlaq misluha fil bilad wa samud allazina jabu sakhra bil wad and did you see what your lord did with samud who carved the rocks in the valleys they can be seen till today in hijr about 100 miles northwest of madina there are you know in the mountains they have carved big halls big houses palaces they are still modern wa fir'aun azil autad and then you see how your lord dealt with fir'aun the fir'aun who had the Ten pegs, you know, zil autad, so big an army that with that army there used to be tents, and to erect the tents they needed pegs, 
So even the pegs were so great in number that several hundred horses or camels were carrying the pegs only. So Fir'aun Adil Awtaad, this became his name. Allazina Tahafil Bilad, those who transgressed in the lands. Now this Tughyani is with respect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whosoever transgresses from the limits of obedience. Because for jinns and humans, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لَيَعْمُنُونَ Whosoever rises above this level. So he is Tughyan, Taghut, الَّذِينَ تَغَوْ فِي الْبِلَادِ فَأَكْسَرُوا فِيهَا الْفَسَادِ and as a result, they multiplied therein corruption and mischief. Now these are two dimensions. Taga against Allah and fasad among the mankind. When you are transgressing against Allah, then you know there shall be oppressions, there will be killings, there will be all sorts of mischiefs and miscreants. So this is two aspects. Ibadullah, Hukukullah or Hukukul Ibad. Regarding Hukukullah, they transgressed. Regarding Hukukul Ibad, they created corruption and mischief in the land. Fasabba alayhim rabbuka sawta azab. So your Lord, let loose on them the lashes of punishment. Inna rabbaka labil mirsad. Verily your Lord is ever on the watch. فَأَمَّا الْإِنسَانُ إِذَا مَبْتَلَاهُ رَبُّهُ فَأَكْرَمَهُ وَنَعَّمَهُ فَيَقُولُ رَبِّي أَكْرَمًا وَأَمَّا إِذَا مَبْتَلَاهُ فَقَدْرَ عَلَيْهِ رِزْقَهُ فَيَقُولُ رَبِّي أَحَانًا These are the two central ayat of this surah and they give you the central theme of this surah. Before this, 14 ayat, all small, small, small. After that also, then from 17th onwards, very small ayat. But these are long ayat too. Fa'amal insanu as for man. Izam abtalahu rabbuhu. Whenever his Lord tries him, tests him by honoring him and blessing him. He says, Fa'yakulu rabbi akraman. Izam abtalahu rabbuhu fa'akramahu wa na'amahu. He honors him and blesses him. Then he says, My Lord has honored me. But when his Lord tries him and tests him, فَقَدَرَ عَلَيْهِ رِزْقَهُ And straightens or restricts for him his sustenance, فَيَقُولُ رَبِّي أَحَانًا Then he says, My Lord has humiliated me. What is wrong in it? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you wealth, all the you know, blessings of this world. If you say Allah has honored me, is it wrong? If you are poor and, you know, your needs are not fulfilled, if you say Allah has humiliated me, what's wrong in it? He is not attributing it to any other God, Allah. Allah has honored me. Allah has humiliated me. But what's the wrong? What's the mistake? The mistake is that if Allah gives you plenty, this is also a test, not honor. And if He gives you less, this is also a test, not humiliation. Both conditions are equal in this respect. That they are for testing. The honor will be on that day. Whosoever is honored on that day, he will be honored. Allah will gather them. And that day will be. So actually, to think that this is honor, this is wrong. If you are poor, you think you have been humiliated. This is wrong. Both conditions are equal. They are tests. Rather, they should be one step further. 
Now, these are, you know, steps, guidance and, you know, going on the wrong path, step by step. The highest dalal dalalam ba'ida would be, then if Allah has given you something and, pledged, and you know, blessed you, you say this is from Laat or Uzza or Manat. And when you are in trouble, you say that Hobal is perhaps angry from me. But this is the shirk. This is the worst, you know, thing that can, a, a, a man can adopt. But you come ne- lower down. Well, Allah has honored me. Allah has humiliated me. Comparing to that person, he is on a better place. That he is attributing honor or humiliation to Allah, not to any other God. But if he thinks that in this world what is given to him is honor, and if there is poverty or something of that type, then it is humiliation. It is wrong. Neither the honor is honor nor humiliation is humiliation. Both are equal. But there is certain a further level of guidance. You may think that the testing by way of inflictions and sort of pain, this test is greater, harder than the test when he blesses, when he gives plenty. No. Real case is the reverse. When he gives you plenty, you will tend to forget him. When you are in need, you will turn to him. So that examination, that test is worse than the test of poverty or pain. Because if you are, you know, enjoying life, rejoicing, everything in plenty, then you will forget Allah. If you are in pain, if you are afflicted by something, you will turn to Allah. And that is what happened with Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, rahimahullah. When you know from the government level, the idea of creativity of Quran, that Quran is also created. This aqidah was being enforced by the state, by government. And he stood up, I am not going to accept this. If you can produce some argument, some proof from the book of Allah or the sayings of his prophet, then I will say, if you can't produce any proof, I, I won't accept. He was beaten, beaten, beaten. They say he was beaten in a way that even if elephant was beaten in that way, you know, that would have not been able to bear it. But he never wept. He took all the beatings. But then the conditions changed. Now the Khalifa, who took over from the former Khalifa, he believed in the same thing in which Ahmad ibn Hanbal believed. Now from the court of the Khalifa, a messenger came with some golden gold pieces, ashrafis, dinars, that the Khalifa has sent this for you as a gift, as a present. Now he wept. Oh Allah, I can't stand this test. This is harder. To be able to resist temptation is more difficult than to resist the persecution. So these are the three levels. No. It's not the honor. You are mistaken. No. This is not humiliation. Allah. No, no, not at all. But your character, most of you have fallen down so much regarding morality that you don't honor the orphan. This is the condition of the Arabian society at that time. They had gone so low, generally speaking. There were exceptions, but generally. And you do not urge others even to feed the needy and, and hungry. 
and you eat up all the inheritance with devouring greed. Don't let take anybody else anything else. Take all the inheritance. This was the practice with them. The older son, he inherited everything. Nothing to even the younger sons. Nothing. What to speak of daughters? So, Takuruna Turasak na lamma. And you love wealth with abounding love. Kalla. Certainly not. When the earth will be crushed into powder or when the earth will be beaten flat by continuous beating. These are two translations done by two sons of Shah Waliullah Dehlvi. Shah Rafiuddin, Rahimahullah, and Shah Abdul Qadir. One has translated when the earth will be crushed into powder. And the other, when the earth will be beaten flat by continuous beating and beating and beating and beating, so it becomes flat. No mountains, nothing of the sorts, no heights, no depths. No oceans. We have read that the seas will be flowed out and they will become dry. So the whole earth will be one piece, plain, simple and stretched. This we have already read in Surah Al-Inshikaq. be stretched. So that it holds all the mankind at once. Standing before the Lord. Because this will this is going to become the, the ground where you know that reckoning and judgment will be passed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we say in Persian, Kissa is Amin, Barsar is Amin. This is the matter of this earth, whatever we have earned. Working here, living here. So all the matters will be decided here. So the next ayah is very important. وَجَا رَبُّكَ وَالْمَلَكُ صَفًّا صَفًّا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will himself descend to this earth. We can't say how this descent will be. But this is it. Just as we had the hadith that every night in the small hours of the morning Allah comes down to the nearest heaven Samayat dunya and then it is called Hal min Is there anybody asking for forgiveness? So I should forgive him? Hal min sailin Is there someone requesting me something? So that I should grant it to him. Now, one step more. Every night he comes to the first heaven. On that day, he will descend further and he will come on this earth. Vaja Rabbuka and your Lord and the angels rank upon rank. Well, Malako, Safan, Safa. Now, this flattened earth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's descent, the angels and all the humans, from Adam till the last man. Of his progeny, which will come in this earth, in this world, till the end of this world. And then the hell will be brought face to face with them. On that day, man will receive admonition, he will be reminded, he will come to his senses. Now to what avail? He's coming to senses. He's getting the admonition. He's getting the reminding now is of no avail. He will say, would that I had forwarded some good for this life of mine. Now it will dawn upon him, this is the life. I thought that life in the, that world was the real life. 
that was only a preface to life. The real book of life has opened today. And alas, I sent nothing for this life. I kept working, 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 only for that life. The requirements or the facilities, conveniences or luxuries of this life. يَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِي قَدَّمْتُ لِحَيَاتِي فَيَوْمَ يَذِلْ لَا يُعَزِّرُ عَذَابَهُ أَحَدُ So none can chastise as he shall chastise on that day. وَلَا يُوسِقُ وَسَاقَهُ أَحَدُ And no one can bind anyone as he shall bind these disbelievers. They will be bound and chastised. In the end, these four small ayat are very heartening. And blessed are the souls to whom Allah will say these words. You can only pray that Allah includes us also. Ya ayyatuhan nafsul mutmainnah O you soul that remained at peace. Nafsul mutmainnah Nafsul lawama in Surah Qiyamah. Nafse Ammara in Surah to Yusuf. Nafse Mutmainna. This is the highest spiritual station for the soul and spirit of man. And what is this Mitminan? Whether something good is coming to you or whether something which is unpleasant coming to you, you stand there like a rock. Not to be influenced by these change, changing conditions. Whatever is coming is coming from my Lord. And you are there firm in the Lazina Kalu Rabunallahu Summastakabu. So you are Nafsimutmainna, the contented soul, the satisfied soul, the soul or spirit which is at peace with himself. To be at peace with yourself is also not an easy job. Repenting, what this happened, why happened, this should not have happened, what I did, I should not have done this. You are there, wavering this way, that way. But if you have accepted Allah as your Lord, whatever has come, it's from Him. Oh Allah, whatever you please is, I am ready. At least we should be like Hazrat Ismail when he said to his father Ibrahim, Satajaduni inshaAllah min as sabirin. Oh father, go on, go ahead, do what you have been commanded to do. And God willing, you will find me forbearing, patient. Ya ayyatuhal nafsul mutmainna. Oh, the contented and satisfied soul, irjaila rabbike radiyatam mardiyah. Now return unto your Lord, well pleased by your Lord, and well pleasing to your Lord. Your Lord is pleased with you, and you will be pleased with Him. Radiyatam mardiyah. And many times we find the verse, رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عن Allah was pleased with them and they were pleased with Allah. This will happen in, in the paradise of Jannah. But here also you should remain pleased with whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decides for you. No complaint. We read it in Surah Al-Taghamun. ما أصاب من مصيبة إلا بإذن الله ومن يؤمن بالله يهد قلبه يا أيتها النفس المطمئنة ترجعي إلى ربك راضية مرضية فادخلي في عبادي go and enter my bondsmen my servants من النبيين والصديقين والشهداء والصالحين now you will have the company of them Go and enter my garden, my paradise. Surah Al-Balad. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. 
لا اقسم بهذا البلد وان تحل بهذا البلد ووالد وما ولد لقد خلقنا الانسان في كبد ثري ايات كونسيستنج اوف اوتس ذا فورث ون از ذا ستيتمنت اون ويچ ذيس اوتس هاف بين تيكن تو انڈرسٹینڈ فرسٹ دیٹ فورتھ آیا لقد خلق الانسان في كبد Verily, we have created man in toil, hardships, sufferings. This life is full of hardships, sufferings. You know what happened to Mahatma Gautam Buddha? He saw different forms of sufferings. A child dying and the parents standing and weeping. can't do anything why why is it so a blind man falling down why is it blind then he left his palace wife son i must solve you know the riddle of this universe what is this why this suffering sarvam dukham this is the main idea of buddhism all is suffering agony pain ghalib says qaid e hayat aur bande gham asal mein dono ek hain maut se pehle aadmi gham se nijat paaye kyun life contains hardships and sufferings agonies pains but the second stage we have read already in shikaq after suffering here then you will be standing before your lord also the animals they suffer here yes but they don't they will never be questioned before their lord but this is the tragedy of mankind now the oaths on this la uqsimu bihad al balad verily i swear by this city that is makkah Makkah was hard for living. No vegetation, nothing grew over there. The Wadi Nghair is desert. Not an easy or pleasant place to live. Wa anta hillum behad al balad. Over and above that, and you, O Prophet, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, you are a dweller in this city, and. you will be permissible in this city what does it mean number 1 that people are persecuting you here first of all the city is hard to live then now you are having the hardship because these disbelievers they are opposing you they are calling you names they are saying you have gone mad so this is another toil another suffering another dimension of suffering and the other meaning is that you will be permissible one day will come and that is the victory of makkah when you will be allowed to make warfare in this city otherwise it is forbidden city is this, this is baladul haram no fighting here and this was the tradition of the arabs that even if a person was searching for the killer murderer of his father for years together and couldn't find him but then he saw him in makka in haram but he won't say anything to him don't do any harm he is in makka this baladul amin baladul haram but one day will be for you o muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam this ban will be lifted your struggle will reach that place 13 or 14 persons were killed on the day of the victory of makkah wa walidin wa ma walad and another manifestation of this toil and hardship the begotter and the begotten now father has to look after the child to provide for the child 
This is not an easy job. Rearing the children. Bring them up. Hardship. Hardship over hardship. Hardship over hardship. Lakad khalak man insan afi sabad. We have created man in hardship and toil. Ayahsabu Allah yakdir alayhi ahad. Does he think that nobody will be able to have power over him? Yaqulu ahlak tumala lobada. And he says boastingly, Well, I have squandered abundant wealth in charity. They used to boast. I fed so many people. I helped so many people. Ayahsabu allam yarahu ahad. Does he think that nobody observed him? If he was doing for Allah, so Allah is seeing, he has, he has seen, no use saying it. But if it was to show off to the people, then you will have no reward from Allah. Simple. Yaqulu ahlak tu ma'alal lobada, ayahsabu allam yarahu ahad. Now the blessings are man. Alam naj'al lahu aynain. Didn't we give him two eyes to see? Lisanam was shafatain and a tongue and two lips with the help of which you speak. And we guided him to the two highways. Now, the interpretation of these two highways is number one that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put, as we shall find in the next surah, the knowledge of good and evil is inherent in human souls. So as if Allah has already guided them. This way is wrong, this way is correct. This is good, this is bad. Telling a lie is bad. Speaking the truth is good. Everybody knows. Fulfilling the promise is good. Going back on their promise, bad. To be respectful to your parents, good. To be disrespectful, bad. Who doesn't know it? So we have already guided him to the two highways. But another interpretation is that the breasts of the mother, the child is born, baby, knows nothing. But as if some had taught him, someone, that your food is there in the breasts of your mother, go and suck it. Nobody has to train him. If that training was not already given to him, how, how would you feed that, child, that baby? So this is the other interpretation and I prefer this interpretation. Despite our blessings, man has not been able to cross the narrow valley which is very high. Aqaba. In high mountains, narrow valleys, Man didn't cross them. What do you mean by that? The explanation is coming in the following ayat. What is that? Mamadraka balakawa. Do you know? What will make you understand what is this? Akaba. What is this narrow valley at the height? Fakkur akaba. Freeing of a slave. You set a slave free. Service to mankind. Sympathy with your human fellow beings. To be able to spend your money. To relieve your fellow beings from pain and suffering. This is the, the narrow bottleneck. Which man, due to his misnigardliness, singleness, he can't cross. Due to love of wealth. Fakko rakabatin. Aw it'amun fi yawmin zimas rakabatin. Or feeding on a day of hunger. When there is famine, when there is drought. And if you have some store of grain, some stock, normally you would li like to keep it. But whosoever can share this with the fellow beings. Although he sees that maybe 
he will need it tomorrow but no itamun fi yawmin zimat sabah yatiman za maqraba an orphan who is also a relative qarabaddar who is a kin aw miskinan za maqraba or a needy man lying in the dust this is the narrow valley which you cross that is you have let loose the break the love for wealth is the break your car cannot go you are pushing the accelerator but the break is there your car cannot go so whatever you try you cannot be a righteous person unless you are relieved of this love for wealth and this subject we have read in in detail in surah al hadid elamu anna allah yuhyi al ardh ba'da mawtiha qad bayyanna lakum al ayat la'allakum ta'qilun inna al musaddiqin wal musaddiqat wa aqradu allah qardan hasana yudha'fu lahum wa lahum ajrun kareem wal ladhina amanu billahi wa rusulihi those who pass this narrow bottleneck and then they have faith then you know their character their moral character it will go up and up and up but you have to open the break first and that break is the love of wealth when you have passed this through this narrow valley summa kana min alladhina amanu wa tawasaw bis sabr wa tawasaw bil mahaba and then you join those people who have faith who believe and who exhort each other for patience and exhort each other for compassion now this is surah al asr written over here wal asr inna al insana lafi khusr illa alladhina amanu wa amilu salihat wa tawasaw bil haqq wa tawasaw bis sabr the only difference is amilu salihat has been taken first freeing a slave feeding the hungry this is amal saleh in surah al asr iman then amal saleh then tawasi bil haqq then tawasi bis sabr here the sequence is different the ahem, the most important amal saleh sympathy for your fellow beings fakku raqabatin aw itamun fi yawmin zimat sabatin yatiman za maqrabatin aw miskinan za matraba mentioned here now you join that band that group that hizbullah who has faith and they exhort each other sabr for sabr and marhaba ulai ka ashabul maimana these are the people to whom their records will be handed over in their right hands wal ladina kafaru bi ayatina as for those who belie our revelations whom ashabul mashama they are the people to whom their record will be handed over in their left hands alayhim narum musada they will be in the fire but the fire will be vaulted over closed from upside you know if there is an oven and it's closed from above then all the heat is within if there is some opening then heat goes out also but closed musada عليهم نار مؤصدة صدق الله العظيم. Now let me give you an introduction. Two pairs of two surahs each going to make a collection of four surahs. Surah of Nur and Zulmat, light and darkness. There are opposites in this universe, good, bad, height, and no all these things contradictions but with these contradictions this universe is working and without these contradictions there would be no working of this universe but there is another contradiction and that is within you the urge to do good and the urge to do bad evil both are within you you have the nafs amara which is urging you for something bad in the nafs amara tum bisu you have that spirit 
it wants to pull you up towards your Lord. So, this Noor and Zulmah, light and darkness, as they are opposed to each other, in the same way, good and evil, they are opposed to each other. So, in these surahs you will find, in the first, eight ayat consist of oaths. And very small, you know, statement on which this oath has been taken. In the next surah, there will be three ayat for oaths. And then, on what the oath is taken, it is detailed somewhat. Then the third is surah al duha The highest level to which a human can rise. And that is... Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, talking to him personally, at an absolutely personal level, Surah Al-Duha and Surah Al-Insirah. These four surahs, very beautiful, very important, and the subject gradually develops. As if you know, there is a flower bud. It has not exfoliated. The petals are there in that bud, but they are not visible. When this flower opens up, this bud, now the petals are visible. So you will find, you know, the gist, the essence in the first surah, that is surah to Shams. Then it will open up, it will be explained, dilated upon in surah to Layl. And then it reaches its zenith in surah to Duha and surah to Inshira. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والشمس وضحاها by the sun and its brightness والقمر إذا تلاها and by the moon when it follows the sun تلا يتلو means to follow this تلاوة تلاوة القرآن this word is derived from this root in reading Quran we follow with the text and some of the people, you know, they move their fingers along with the text. You might have seen. So, it's a following. You are following the text. But the exact literal meaning of Tala Yatlu is to follow someone. By the sun and its brightness, and by the moon when it follows the sun. And by the day when it reveals the sun. As if day has shown us the sun. And by the night, when it enshrouds the sun, covers the sun, sun is gone, not visible. And by the heaven, and as he created it, built it, or by him who has created it. These are two ways of translating this. And by the heaven, and the way Allah has created it, or by Him who has created it. Wal ard wa ma tahaha. And by the earth, and by Him who created it, spread it, or by the earth, and as it has been spread. Wa nafsin wa ma sawaha. And by the human soul, and as he has finished it, created it, finished it, given him the finishing touches. These are the eight ayat. For alhamaha fujuraha wa taqwaha. Then he has inspired in it, in the soul, human soul, with the consciousness of the wickedness and piety. This human soul is not blind. It sees. This is right, this is wrong. This is good, this is bad. These basic moral values are inherent in human spirit, human soul. Man knows by his very nature, this is good, this is bad. This is evil, this is good. Now what is the statement on which these eight oaths have been taken? Now, if there are differences, 
there will be different ends also. All their oaths are on this statement. Successful will be only who? That who purifies this nafs. And whosoever buries it, dasaha, whosoever buries it in the dust, he is a failure, he is doomed. This ayah has first once more come in Surah Al-A'la. Half of the statement was there. But here the statement, if you see the day and the night, if you see the sun and the moon, if you see the sky and the earth, if you are seeing all these things different, so the end will be different. If the good and evil are different, then you know there are going to be two goals, two ends. قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا Definitely, successful will be one who purifies his soul. وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ دَسَّاهَا دَسَّا يَدُسُّ We had read it, that a Bedouin, when it was told to him that a daughter has been born, then he kept on thinking, I, should I keep her despite all this humili- humiliation? Or I should go and bury him in the dust, in the sand. That is the saha. I told you, if this nafs has not been purified, if this id and libido has overwhelmed it, what does it mean? As if this soul or spirit is dead and buried in this grave. Now this body of mine is a grave for this soul. Qad aflah man zakkaha wa qad khaba man now this happens at the individual level and this happens also at the collective level. So collective level is mentioned in the remaining five ayat of this surah which we shall take inshallah tomorrow. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Azim wa nafani wa iyaakum bil ayati wa zikri al-Hakim.